This virus is wreaking havoc. One of the stats I heard yesterday, they expect 200,000 people dead by August? What the hell? This is June. The, uh, the nature of the virus is to mutate. The nature of any virus is to mutate. That's how, it's my understanding anyway, I'm not trying to come across like a virologist, a virologist, but it's my understanding that's how these viruses keep coming around, especially the flu virus. Every year, every year, different, slightly different mutated strain. It is the nature of viruses. Apparently, they are determined, sons of bitches, and in this case, it seems that they are determined to kill as many people on the planet as they can. And, and I think the testing area for this virus is old people, among whom the virus has been incredibly successful. Now, that could be a function of, of geography and a function of uh, being closed in together in nursing homes or hospitals. Or it could be just what this virus somehow, and it's not a living entity, I understand this, I understand that, but somehow this virus has, don't misunderstand this, figured out that the most vulnerable are the least able to defend themselves. So the first go around, let's see how many people I can kill. And then the second go around, I'll go for the younger ones, the stronger ones, the ones that are still capable of reproducing. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, that's cartoon shit. I understand that. But it just seems like this non-living entity, this virus, is determined to destroy everything it comes in contact with, sort of like Trump. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the, uh, the coronavirus, the, the, the first area, it's my understanding, the first area of the human body that it attacks is the lungs. And a federal agency has just been ordered by Trump to halt funding for new lung treatments. This is what I'm talking about. How can these Christian evangelicals continue to get down on their knees in front of this guy and, and, and commit fellatio? I mean, what is wrong with these people? Halted funding for research into new lung treatments when there is a virus loose in the country on the planet that attacks first the lungs. And what happens when this virus kills? First, it attacks the lungs. It fills them with fluid. It robs the body of oxygen. And according to the New York Times, going on the science, in chest x-rays of people who are on the verge of death from this virus, the once clear lungs turn white, which is a clear sign of how dangerously sick people become. So we know all that. The science teaches all that. Here comes the politics. Earlier this month, June, the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, or BARDA, BARDA, a federal health agency, abruptly notified companies and researchers that BARDA was halting funding for treatments for this severe form of COVID-19, the lung attack. Notified companies and researchers that BARDA, okay, that's it, no more funding, goodbye, you're out of here. Jesus Christ. Now, other than the, 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 the incredible stupidity and ignorance of, of the people who follow the directives of this orange ape in the White House. 
Other than that, this new policy highlights how insane the Trump administration is acting by placing, you might say, all of its money on vaccines as the way to return American society and the economy, let's not forget, to normal in a presidential election year. Does this dumb son of a bitch Trump not understand that a vaccine is not a treatment? It's a preventive. Oh, my God. According to the New York Times, BARDA has pledged more than $2.2 billion dollars in deals with five vaccine manufacturers looking to find a preventive compared with about $359 million toward potential treatments for people who are already sick. But this shift in strategy, according to the Times, also shows that the Trump gangster administration is backing away from what has been relatively modest funding that's been provided so far for treatments that address the severe lung attack. But it's continuing to support the antiviral therapies that could treat people earlier in the course of the disease. Why Is this not a two-track effort? There are tens of thousands of people. I'm pulling this out of the air, but I know it's true, and so do you. There are tens of thousands of people right now, this moment, as I'm talking, who are infected with COVID-19, who are going to die because their lungs fill with fluid And their bodies can no longer draw oxygen from the bloodstream because none is going in. We know this. So why pick now to stop funding research on how to treat these lung attacks? Does this make any sense to you, truth seeker? And the Times reports this, the decision to suspend investment in lung treatments blindsided academic researchers and executives at small biotech companies who said they spent months pitching their research proposals to BARDA, which is a division of the Department of Health and Human Services. Who's in charge of that department? Right. Clinicians and bioethicists and people like me and you, I'm sure, say that BARDA should continue supporting research into treatments for these lung conditions. And because the policy is a sensible way to spend federal dollars, I mean, Not that these federal dollars are or should be limited. If we can spend a trillion dollars to sustain small businesses, okay, great. If we can spend a trillion dollars to sustain large corporations, bullshit. Why is this money, a half of it, a fourth of it, not going into research for these lung diseases or disease that is a manifestation of the COVID-19 virus. Why? 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 Now, if you went through eighth grade science, you know that vaccines are universally considered to be the world's best hope for stopping any virus. A vaccination. But as the Times reports, scientists and doctors treating patients already hospitalized 
with COVID-19 say that there's no guarantee a vaccine will be ready by the end of the year as the orange ape has promised. And no treatment, no therapy has been proved to prevent this monstrous disease, this Trump virus. Nothing. So why stop research into treatments for people already suffering? The numbers are going to go up. There is nothing to prevent it at this point. I know what Fauci said the other day, yesterday, that he was, what, I'm paraphrasing, but he was conditionally hopeful that by the end of the year there might be something ready as a vaccine, as a preventive. But what about the people who between now, this is what, June, we have six months left. How many tens of thousands more people are going to contract this disease? Maybe I will. Maybe you will. Maybe your family members or mine. But we know this. Tens of thousands of people are going to contract or develop, however you want to put it, this horrific virus. And there's no treatment. There's none. And then the Times reports some statistics here. Most of the patients, uh, it says, admitted to the ICU for COVID-19 at Northwell Health in New York. That's a system of 23 hospitals that were at the epicenter of the epidemic this past spring. But most of the patients have developed severe respiratory distress, according to the regional director of critical care medicine, at this chain of hospitals. And the doctor who is the director said this, quote, you're going to need other forms of treatment for a lot of those people. And I feel like that's where there's going to be a gaping hole because BARDA has notified researchers on the university level, researchers in small biotech companies, hey, no more money. My God, you can't just do your research in trying to find a preventive. You've got to consider the people who are already sick, who are already suffering uh, the tortures of the damned. From what I've heard, from what you've heard, from what we've seen on television, uh, the, the, the weeping, exhausted, uh, wrung out front uh, 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 frontline medical people who, who have been working unbelievable, ungodly, inhuman hours. You, we've heard them crying. We've heard them sobbing about what they have been faced with. You do have to pay attention to the needs of everybody. That's why when these healthcare workers, the nurses and the nurse practitioners and the doctors, when they intubate somebody, they know what the odds are of that person surviving, but they do it anyway because everyone deserves a piece of the pie, the cure, the cure, if there's a cure, if there's something to mitigate the symptoms. And some people, with some people, it works, they survive. And when they leave the hospital, they're applauded. It's public money. So you do have to pay attention to the needs of all. Everybody deserves some piece of the pie. Hey, True Seekers, Mike Malloy here. While you're sheltering in place and practicing safe social behavior, probably catching up on the Malloy cast, remember, we have a new weekly program just for our patron supporters. There are other thank you gifts for your support. Remember, visit MikeMalloy.com and click on the big patron link on the main page. You can't miss it, and we can't do without you. 